back guys. So today I'm working on a project. I'm painting my camper and so I'm going with this Graco uh, True Coat 360. It's a single speed. So I'm going to go ahead and review it while I'm at it, while I'm painting it. So this is, you know, kind of doing two things at once here. My thought with this guy, I've never had it before. It's airless. It is something I'm going to put the paint inside. And the camper's probably going to be the biggest job possible for this thing. It's probably a little too big of a job for this. Um, you know, it's, it's extending its limits, I think, is what I anticipate. But I got this one instead of one of the bigger ones because I want to be able to use it in the future. So when I get back to doing more garage projects, especially in the winter time when I'm not going to be outside as much, maybe doing some furniture stuff, I'm hoping that I'll be able to use this. I'm going to go ahead and open this guy up. So we have our owner's manual. As always, it's massive. It's huge. A million instructions, like usual. So we have this little silicone, I think. It's like a paint pour, like you put it on your paint bucket and it's going to pay, uh, pour into the canister here. This is some, it's called pump armor. It's storage and freeze protection for the airless pumps. Look like we also have some seal lube. I mean, we can all assume what that is. And probably a nozzle to cap off that end or something when we're not using it. That bag's in there. A quick guide, it's it's a laminated thick piece of paper. It's something that should last you. I mean, if you, you know, that's nice that it's not just, you know, paper that's going to get destroyed. Like, it's a pretty good thing. The cord's really small. I didn't expect that, whatever, though. I think that was a paint tip that I showed you in there a minute ago. So I don't know if we can call this the hopper or not, but that's what I'm going to call it. There's four. These are not hard. They're, they're actually thin. That's probably why it's airless. It probably vacuums. Um, but I'm guessing they slide in here. So there's four of these little plastic containers. There's this uh, filter piece that I'm sure goes in there. And I'm still trying to figure out where this part plays in the things. I'm going to go ahead and read some things and then I'll get back to you. I wanted to be right there for the unboxing. It Like I wanted to do this naturally. So All right. So a little bit lost in these directions. So I'm just going to take it one thing at a time. Set up. Flex liner into the cup support. Got my flex liner and a cup support. All right, I've screwed the lid on. Fairly simple so far. Put the lid on. Strainer. The strainer's got some interlocking pieces here, so boom, there's that. And put that in there. I said strainer, I meant funnel locks in and then the strainer there. It says the strainer's air tube will prevent paint from overflowing the cup says don't watch the cup watch your funnel start filling it in and once it stops draining then it's full and we'll try this handy dandy little contraption whoa well <laughs> we've already made a big old mess Slowly pour paint into the funnel. When the paint stops draining down, the cup is full. I'm not sold on this pouring attachment. The paint I'm using is a Sherwin-Williams Super Paint and Primer. Um, it's an acrylic latex, so it's pretty thick. So it says there will be some excess paint that I actually keep all that attached. You see this like little uh, pitcher side, whatever funnel. I'm supposed to just pour that back in to my paint can. All right, stop spraying or stop filling. And I'll show you guys up close here. It's not going through the strainer anymore. You see that our bucket or whatever you want to call that is pretty full. So it says to pour that back. Set that down, let it run back through the strainer once again. 
Now it says I gotta lift up the strainer and look in there to see if I see crossbars. If not, it's overfilled. We see, you see those crossbars? So it's not overfilled. If it was above that, it was. So there we go. Now I need to remove this piece. It says hook it on the edge of the paint can. Oh. Well, that sounded handy, but it didn't really hook. Whatever, we set it in the paint can. There's that. Okay, now I gotta attach this. Cleaned up a little bit of my paint mess. Pump filter is installed and clean, yes. So it says verify that filter. Sorry, I'm trying to remember to show you guys. Installed, clean, it is. Okay, it talks about <clears throat> aligning the valve with the pump thing. So I think this is all installed already for me on this one. But I think it said to install these parts. Align vacuum valve on cup lid with prime knob. So that's the prime knob. And there's the vacuum valve lid, I'm thinking. Unless it's this. It's gotta be that part. Push cup assembly onto sprayer, twist to lock. I mean, it's gotta be as simple as that, right? Yeah, I just twisted it in. Oh man, sometimes these instructions seem so complicated for no reason. Prime the pump as follows. Verify prime knob is pointed down to prime position. Putting it in prime. Plug the spray into a grounded power source. I have a grounded power source right here, plugging it in. Open the AccuValve cap and gently squeeze the flex liner so no more air bubbles appear. Okay, so open this little cap. Squeeze it. I'm seeing air. Oh, okay. I saw air bubbles. What do I do after that? I don't think you guys can see down there. There's a tiny little pinhole in there. And I started squeezing. I saw air bubbles and then paint coming out just a little bit. Tilt the sprayer such that the vacuum valve is the highest point. So the air and the flex. Okay, so tilt it this way. That's a good pointer too. So I'm tilting it up. Now I'm getting all that air out. And now it stopped. Pardon my phone for ringing. My hands are kind of full. Continue to squeeze the flex liner while pulling the trigger for 10 seconds. This will purge all air from the pump and cup. Paint will not spray out, but will recirculate through the pump and back into the cup. When no more air bubbles appear in the vacuum valve, release the trigger and close the vacuum valve cap. So look for air bubbles. Closing the cap. Turn prime knob forward to spray position. Verify spray tip is forward and spray position. Spray tip wasn't, but it is now. Point sprayer into waste pail and pull the trigger for five seconds to spray out storage fluid. To avoid pump damage, the sprayer does not spray out five seconds. Stop and repeat start. So, we don't have any storage fluids in there because this is a first time usage. So now we're ready to spray. Set speed to the lowest control setting. It doesn't have one. Point at scrap cardboard, pull the trigger to stress the spray pattern. So I think we're ready to go, guys. I just turn that horizontal. Now, I feel like I learned from mistakes in the past. It always bothered me that I didn't wear a mask before when I painted my house. So I'm going to try wearing one today.
there are a few a couple spots where i had some runs uh i got to get better with that gun you can see one there the the paint coat it's been a day it feels pretty good this is one of my biggest screw ups i'm gonna have to fix this of course it's right by the door we're gonna come in and out it looks so terrible because it had some big large glops and i came out here with paper towels and wiped it off i was like well i'm not sure what else to do and so i'm gonna spray that again there may be a little bit of texture to it in the end uh so that's on me so i'm in the garage right now waiting uh this is you know the next day i ran out of my gallon of paint on the camper for this trial run yesterday uh this is gonna be a good little test for this thing i had places to be things to do i rushed through the cleanup um Actually, I went really fast on it. So we'll see what happens. But um, anyways, you know, it could be contested. I didn't clean it super good. Uh, so it's going to be a good little trial on this today. See what happens. See if it, it runs and operates smoothly today after a fast cleanup yesterday. And then, of course, we have a different color we're going to want to do. So I'm going to have to clean it out again. I'm happy about this True Graco True Coat 360. It's a single speed sprayer. Like... When you're going through the instructions, it seems kind of overwhelming. It kind of seems like there's a lot to it. But, you know, today's the second day. I haven't even looked at the instructions today. I'm like, all right, filling this thing, step one, is really easy. It really boils down to, um, <coughs> really boils down to put the funnel on with the filter and run the paint through the filter. And when it's full, it's gonna stop filling. You can check that, you know, valve or whatever. And then priming this thing really is simple. You open that little that little that pop pop top on the top. You squeeze out the air bubbles holding it so that that's kind of where the top is. You have the settings flip to prime. You spray. You turn it on. It doesn't spray out. It recirculates it and it kind of pushes all the air bubbles out. And when there's no more bubbles, turn it to spray and you're ready to go. So it's crazy easy. Cleaning it really was like clean the clean the container, and then you put it on prime. You, you fill it with clean water because it's not primed and whatnot, and it's water. It's a liquid, or it's it's more runny than the paint. You hold it upside down. You run it through the prime. You flip this back and forth so you do the spray and the clean out. So you're cleaning the system out really well, and then you put it on spray and you do the same thing. So that was the cleaning of it. The only thing I haven't learned yet. The only thing I haven't checked out is like the storing it putting it away and like putting the chemical in it so today we'll check that out after i do this spraying here in a minute going back to those spots that have drips and runs and imperfections those aren't on the sprayer those are on me particularly the one by the front door that was where i was spending way too much time and energy focused on trying to get in all the cracks of that door and the window and i didn't continue to move my sprayer around and did not think about it and I just let too much paint get piled up in one area. So I don't fault the sprayer at all in that. That was on my skill level and practice of using it. All right guys, so I realized you probably didn't get a clear understanding or visual of how to prime this thing. So I'm done spraying this cream on the camper for today and it's gonna have to dry, so I'm gonna have to be done painting, but I'm going to reload this basically and reprime it just to show you guys a little closer up. Sometimes I get doing things and forget what my eyes see and your eyes aren't seeing. So anyways, I have filled this, I've actually only about half filled this container, um, this flexible bottle or whatever it is. 
I open this cap as I mentioned before and I'm just gently squeezing so you're seeing air bubbles come out of there notice while I'm taking the time for that and it doesn't normally go this much but since I only filled it halfway there's a lot of air in this thing still uh, notice that nozzle to the right is on prime pump instead of spray try to speed this up a little bit so this might be an attribute or a thing about this that you have to keep in mind if you're gonna do a very very small project and only gonna use like half of a bottle or half of a canister of paint you might just be better off buying spray paint all right so we don't have any more air bubbles coming and I've got it tilted so that that's at the highest point so we don't have any air bubbles at the moment now I'm gonna turn this on I'm gonna pull the trigger while I'm still squeezing this this uh, flexible bottle just a little bit. Okay, sometimes, so I'm gonna close that up. Sometimes I'll see the, the paint circulating in here and kind of pushing the bubbles out or whatever not that time i saw none so it must still be primed it must be in good shape so we're ready to go we would just flip it over to spray and then we'd start spraying i'm not going to do that because i'm not going to spray on the camper anymore today i'm actually going to start my cleanup now so i'm going to go back to prime i also want to point out up close in case i didn't this and i've been using this on the camper very easy to just flip from vertical that's vertical this is horizontal uh, when I got around the windows, I was just flipping it up and down to get the edges. So there's that. We're on spray right now, which spray is a arrow. Then when I'm cleaning, you actually go through both and then you flip it backwards. I forget what they call it, but you know, that's for the cleaning process um, on the nozzle. There's the tip. I, uh... All right, yeah, let's go ahead and get cleaning on this thing. So step one to cleaning is going to be just to take the canister off. I need to get a paper towel or something. <clears throat> Let me set that there for a minute. Set that down there. You know, this will make it convenient for me right now. So I'm just gonna set that in there so I'm not getting paint or leaves or anything all over in it as much as I can prevent. All of these parts are just gonna get cleaned, sprayed, hosed through, sink, whatever, you know, your typical cleaning of them with water get to that in a few minutes all right I'll put this back together I got about as much of the paint out of it as I could well yeah I'm gonna clean those parts out inside the house so all right brand new bucket just plain old clean water This guy on here. Turn it upside down and we're on prime. I don't know if you saw, but that clean water circulated into a muddy mess real fast. Again, upside down. It says about 15 seconds if I remember correctly. Now we're gonna switch it back to spray again with upside down. Spray into our bucket. And alternate between the spray and the clean out, which is the larger opening. I came in here, I looked at these instructions, which have been pretty helpful. And uh, the cleanup, I was basically done. There was only one more step that it mentioned that I had missed yesterday. That's the nozzle itself. It just says take it out and use a toothbrush. So I twist it. You pull it out like that. Easy enough. Use a toothbrush. I actually got it really pretty darn clean when I was working on it anyways. Uh, you just don't want it to clog up or anything, obviously. So just making sure that area is cleaned up. I'll look at that a little closer in just a minute once I get off of here but um 
yeah so that was it i was like well what about this this pump armor this stuff so i read the back of it it's basically for long-term storage uh you know looks like it's it helps it from freezing up and whatnot so really it's just clean out the pump it's not got nearly as many parts as the the larger ones that you'll put the hose in it's not as heavy as a wagner is i think it gives a better spray uh there was some overspray going on this job i'm doing with the camper i'm using a second tone of paint i'm going to put some uh some frog tape on there and we're going to have some more paint a different completely different cover on the top and on the top and on the bottom and so i'm a little concerned about overspray some of that might just come into play as far as my um skills my my own painting you know just making sure i'm not too far away not letting the spray go too far or whatever so check out my video that's going to be coming out soon that's going to be about actually painting the camper like i said i'm doing these simultaneous i want to review this it's actually you know i wanted to review this let you know how i fit what i think of it but i also want to stay focused on my content i'm creating about remodeling my camper so there's two videos going on at the same time there i'm going to close this one out i've used the tool i can tell you i love the tool uh yeah you got to refill it regularly but it's not as much of a pain to clean out as the larger ones are with all the hoses and stuff. It's not too heavy. Uh, I really love the airless sprayer. Watch the wind. I learned this last time with my big one I had previously, and this has got that airless sprayer, same situation. If the wind is going, you're overspray, you might end up giving yourself a new paint job on your car. Um, I was careful of that. My shed that's behind my camper, it did get a little bit of overspray on it, but not much at all, and I'm not too worried about it. Uh, just get a few speckles in there so it, it's a reality it's a thing so my message is that this Graco true coat true airless 360 it is a single speed I love it um, I think it's simple to use especially if you're gonna use one color of paint if you're gonna paint a piece of furniture I would get this out and use it rather than brushes and stuff I could see you guys if you guys follow me you know I've done some stuff in my church I help out I could see getting this out and painting the hallways or something in my church I think it'll make the job so much faster than brushes or rolls or whatever but then again it's not quite big enough to do a house so I like this tool for what it's for there you go come back if you want to see how it does as far as the overspray with that second coat check out that video with the camper like comment and subscribe I'll see you guys next time